Hey guys, it's Kyle with Rhino. I'm here at Palouse Falls and I want to show you how to do a time lapse with Rhino Motion and Rhino Arc. Now, if you already have Rhino Motion, adding Rhino Arc to your system to add pan to your time lapses is super simple. All you have to do is mount Rhino Arc, spin it onto your carriage, has its own contained battery, lasts four to five hours. And so all I do to connect Rhino Motion to Rhino Arc is use this cable here. It spans the whole length of this slider or a 42 inch slider. And then if you want to use the built-in intervalometer, which we recommend doing, all you have to do is use your, your camera connection cable to go from this port here into your camera and Rhino Motion will trigger your shots through Rhino Arc. All right, so when you look at taking a time-lapse, there's really three different kinds of moves you can do. Um, before we actually set it up, to pair Rhino Motion and Rhino Arc, all you do is go into settings menu under arc, click in, and now on the OLED screen on arc, it'll say paired. That just means there's a connection, they're talking to each other. So let's go back out of here, go into time-lapse, advanced time-lapse, calibrate. On Rhino Motion, calibration is automatic. It runs into the end and it knows exactly where it's at. So when you add Rhino Arc, it's actually really easy to set up a move. So if we look at the three different types of moves, one, you have a tracking type shot. This is what we use for interviews so that at your in and your out position, your camera is facing the exact same shot. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set that up for you right now. So with arc, all you do is you, you turn the wheel to point your camera at what you want. So I'm gonna center up the waterfall and we're gonna track around that. So after you set your in, it's gonna go to your out position. All right, so after setting this up, with our subject matter being so far away, it actually didn't do much when we centered the object on it. Now, in an interview, when you're closer, say six, eight feet away from your subject, you're gonna have a lot of exaggerated movement with arc, especially if your slider is perpendicular to your subject. So honestly, with this shot, I wouldn't use a tracking type shot. So let's move on to the next shot. Normally we recommend when you're sliding one direction, to pan the opposite direction because it exaggerates the movement. So if we go back, I'm just gonna press back and create a new arc move. It's gonna go back to in. We call these creative type shots because really you can do whatever you want. Um, we've set this shot up here where this rock wall is, is kind of obscuring the waterfall. And so what I wanna do is focus off to the right a little bit. That looks good there. And then as I slide left, I wanna center up the waterfall in the middle of my frame. So if I preview this shot, which I use the command move to in, that'll actually show me my shot in real time. So if I go back to my start and then I go move to out, this is gonna be in real time of the, the shot. And honestly, that's that's perfect, that's what I'm looking for with this kind of reveal shot. The other kind of shot that you can do is what we call a sweeping shot. So I'm gonna go back, create a new arc move. And a sweeping shot is where you're, you're panning in the same direction that you're sliding in. So I really wouldn't recommend it for this kind of shot, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like. This is more for a panorama if you have a large scene in front of you. So I'm gonna start over here at the rock wall. And then I'm gonna pan right. And I'm gonna to move to in, preview my shot. It's actually not a bad time lapse. It's not a bad shot. So when you sweep, it doesn't exaggerate the movement as much. So you can kind of lose the feeling of sliding because it almost feels like you're just panning. So those are the three types of moves, tracking, creative type shot, which is a tracking without an actual subject matter that you're tracking on and sweeping. The last step is to actually set up our shot with our camera. So we're shooting with a Sony a7S II with a Rockinon 24 mil CineLens and to really get the motion of the water, we're gonna shoot with a two second shutter speed. 
And to do that without blowing out our picture, we're using a 0.9 ND filter. So to translate all that to Rhino Motion, you're gonna to navigate to the advanced time-lapse menu, set your exposure to two seconds in the menu, click test shot, that's actually gonna trigger an exposure on your camera for you to preview. Once you like what you see, you're ready to go. So next step, my duration, it's gonna be dark in three hours. So what I'm gonna do is set up a half hour time lapse because it's getting dark pretty soon. And that's gonna give me a maximum of a 25 second time lapse in my editor. That's great. Last step is to click start. It's gonna to move to in. You can preview your move one last time. Click go and we'll wait for half an hour.